It's Two on the Aisle with me, Charles Gross, and Jeff Goodman. Tonight, we talk about The Boxer, Spitting in the Face of the Devil, and How Now Dow Jones. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Two on the Aisle. This time, we are really on the streets. What is the streets? All right. We are sitting on Broadway's brand new pedestrian mall, as I like to call it, which starts all the way down at 34th and goes all the way back down there, oh. up there, uptown to about, what, about 50th, 52nd? Uh, 48th, I think, actually. 48th? Oh, it's up to 48th. Don't ever grab my microphone for me again. Technically, that's my microphone. By the way, my name is Charles Gross. Oh, yes, and I'm Jeff Goodman. Welcome to Two on the Aisle. <laughs> Our first show of the evening is The Boxer. Now this is a basically a silent film on stage. It's in the tradition of Chaplin, Keaton, but I think there's a lot of Bill Irwin in it also. It could be. And essentially, there is a Velma. Well, why don't we tell the story? It takes place in the Depression era, where a lot of women, in order to get money, dressed up like men to get work. So she keeps pretending to be a man, but it's not really successful at it. That's Velma. What's Velma? That's her name. Yes. That is our heroine hero. And along the way, she meets this struggling boxer. A very bad boxer at that, who is being trained at the moment, but she thinks he's getting beaten up. So she knocks out the trainer. And she'll train him to make up for that. Right. And essentially, you have this whole array of silent movie shtick, including chases and fights, and yes, Romance. Madcap. Very much so. With some wonderfully scene appropriate music. Uh, from oh, the music is one of the best parts of the show. Absolutely. This is B. Wolf. She is the show's pianist. I have to say, the show, all the music, all the sound effects are done live, which certainly adds. By two people. B. Wolf on the piano, and then the, the Johnny, if you keep it. Woo, so this is a tough name. Sequencia? Close enough. He is on the percussion. And the string. The sound effects is what he's listed as. Oh. Really very well done. Very that means a synthesizer. Very stage. This was written and directed by Matt Lyle, whose wife, uh, Kim Lyle, plays the And I have to say, had they been around when there actually were silent films in the days of Chaplin and Keaton, I think there really would have been a whole series. Oh, I don't know. You see, Velma. I think this was a very sad piece, but yet I think that they would have been a very ordinary piece in the uh, in the silent film era. But let's not go off the fact that this is a very good piece. Let's not put them in different eras. Let's keep them right where they should be in the, the early O's of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And O's as that. And, uh, Kim Lyle is just wonderful as Velma. She is funny. She is she, she's just... How about my pal Jeff as the boxer? Yes, Jeff Swear. Jen, Jen, excuse me, as the boxer, a wonderful physical comedian. I was looking at, um, when I was uh, doing the B-roll, I was... What is the B-roll, Charlie, for those of us? The scenes that we will be seeing very shortly from the boxer. Oh! I was very impressed in all, all... I didn't realize how much physical shtick he did until I uh, was looking at it again. And he really does, and they make a wonderful pair. And this really is a very, very special and very entertaining play. I showed the scenes uh, to my... They were laughing out loud. So... Before we're going to go to the well, let's let's talk a little bit more, and then we'll show a scene or two from the boxer. Huh? But uh, I don't know if there's much more to know other than they fall in love, and, you know. and eventually he finds out that she's a she, but only after he fights the champ and wins. I don't think there's much too much a way to say. Now, well, let's see some scenes from the boxer. Okay, and then we're going to we have a special bonus because we have an interview with. Well, we'll come. Jeff Swearington, so we're going to go right into that. No, I think... Oh, you want from the scenes? We'll go from the scenes to the interview. He never tells me these things. But before so, that, how many playbills would you give the boxer? I give the boxer... I, I thought it was pretty good. I give about three playbills. All right, I'm going to... Maybe three and a half. I'm going to go one... Maybe three and a quarter. Uh, maybe three and a half. I hear, I hear four. No, three and a half. Well, I, I will go to four, and let's take a look. Four playbills, and now let's take a look at the boxer. Thank <laughs> you. 
And I'm here with Kim Lyle and Jeff Swearington. They have just finished a performance of The Boxer. And in true fringe fashion, we just kind of tackled them and asked them to come on the show. <laughs> and that's kind of appropriate because there's a lot of tackling in your show. Yes, a great deal of physical action for sure. And this is kind of, this I think was sold as a kind of... Uh, silent movie on stage in the tradition of Keaton and Chaplin? Yeah, we definitely took a lot of inspiration from Buster Keaton and Charlie, or Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin as far as our characters go, and silent film in general for all the different physical bits and things like that. What about uh, someone like Bill Irwin, who certainly... Bill Irwin is definitely, definitely uh, um, a part of this. Our director and writer of the play is a big fan of his, and, um, and uh, we were hoping to get him here, but it didn't quite work out. Okay, well, we actually have a copy of your show, so we'll be happy to send it to him if we, if we can find him. You know, I'd, I'd be interested in having a copy of that. That can be arranged. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> now, how did this, well, well, first, tell me quickly about the plot of the show. Okay, uh, it's a very simple plot. Um, I dress as a girl, as I am a girl dressed as a boy to find work in the Depression, and I happen upon him getting beaten up by a man, and I come to his defense, and it turns out that that was his trainer. He's a boxer, a uh, very poor boxer. And, uh, and Very I, poor and he has no money or he's just a lousy fighter? Uh, a little bit uh, of both. <laughs> and so I, uh, I take on training him and I fall in love with him at first sight. And uh, the whole time I'm dressed as a man and, and, and uh, there's a lot of hijinks in between goons. And then he fights the Bavarian Beast. Well, I end up fighting the Bavarian Beast. And, uh, and then at the end he discovers I'm a woman and we kiss. Oh, I know. Aww. Now is this... <laughs> How did this come about? Because there aren't too many silent movies. I think Mel Brooks did the last one. Sure. Um, Matt Lyle, who's the playwright and director, is a big fan of uh, classic comedies, like I said, Bill Irwin, Charlie Chaplin, all that. And, uh, and we did a silent scene in a previous play, and he, he started to think about, what, you know, what, can this work for an hour? You know? And uh, so we started working on a simple plot, and then, uh, and then it all came together. Is this a relation, Matt? Uh, yes, he's my husband. Oh, okay. Yes. And actually, we co-founded Bootstraps Comedy Theater back in 03, so it's kind of a labor of love, the whole thing. Okay. Now, do you see this as part of a series? Because certainly there were lots of Charlie Chaplin, lots of Buster sure. Keaton movies. Yeah, in fact, Matt has just finished writing uh, kind of a follow-up with uh, the two same characters uh, called The Better Doctor. It's a little bit of a satire on the healthcare industry, so it's a little timely. We're kind of uh, looking around for places that might be interested in doing that one. Where are you guys based? We're based in Dallas, Texas. And Chicago, Illinois. Sorry, most of our cast is from Dallas. Matt and I recently moved to Chicago, so we're a little uh, Midwestern overall. How did you come to found the bootstrap? Um, we graduated from college, and we worked around Dallas a little bit, and we realized that, uh, that why not give it a try? Like, uh, if, if other people could do it, so could we. So we got a group of our friends together, and we usually work with people that we know and like and, and respect their talent, and, and uh, it's all been good so far. And you get knocked around quite a bit in this. How did you? How did they rope you in? Um, Matt sent me the script uh, right after he just finished a bare bones version of it and said that he had uh, me in mind to play the part. And I love any kind of physical acting or getting bumped around. I'm getting older to where I like it less and less, but I love the show. I think the show's really good. I think anyone from any age in any level of experience watching theater can love it. You can speak any language and still love this show. It's, it's so good and so I'll beat myself up for this show. You know? I think, okay, but keeps on ticking. As right. this, oh, okay, yes. I don't think you beat yourself up. Mostly everybody else seems to beat you up. Yeah, yeah, um, he's the worst boxer of all time. Um, so, you know, and of course, everything's, you know, feigned on stage, you know, nothing's really touched me. Um, and it's right, it's on the left leg, it's all bruised. The left leg is just bruised up, but the rest is okay. I hurt my back a long time ago doing the show, but it's kind of getting better. Doing this one? Doing this exact show, yeah. And so it took years to kind of get over that. But I can still do theater and get around. It's just kind of never the same for a while. Who did the music selection? I noticed that there are some very scene-appropriate tunes, and somebody must love Rodgers and Hammerstein very much. That is our brilliant uh, composer and, and pianist, B. Wolf. She's amazing. She's got this uh, lexicon of all of these references. Half of them I don't know. Uh, and, and she seamlessly interweaves them with her own co uh, compositions, that, uh, themes that she composed just for this show. And, uh, and I think it's a, it, it provides a great, like, under... Um, subtext for each scene. If you're familiar with the songs that she's playing, it gives just an extra little joke for the music lovers, you know. 
Okay. She's fantastic. Yes, and I should mention the music and the sound effects were all done live on stage, which actually they would have been had this been an, an actual uh, silent movie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what, aside from the sequel, what is Bootstrap up to? Uh, Bootstraps will, would love to do the Boxer in Chicago sometime. That's on, on the horizon. We don't have any specific plans. Uh, this has just taken up a lot of our time the past year with the application and the, the fundraising and the preparation and all of this. So uh, we really haven't thought specifically about the next step. Okay. But we will do something. Okay. And it'll be funny. Okay, and <laughs> we, are, we are hoping that Velma will return maybe at the Fringe, Chicago. This is, this is Pick It Up, someone in Chicago. We don't, I don't really know what the theater is like in Chicago, but <laughs> I can tell you, this is coming from New York. We've got plenty of it. This is a show you guys should pick up. So look out for Velma, and I'm hoping we'll have you back someday. Well, thank you. We'd love to come back.